One of the big improvements in Sibelius 7.5 and Sibelius 7 for that matter over previous versions is the quality of the sounds that it produces. It comes pre-installed with a massive sound library called Sibelius 7 Sounds and those sounds are all controlled from the mixer. We're going to have a look at that just shortly. The file I'm going to use for this again is one of the demo files that comes with Sibelius and this is written for trumpets and trombones, guitars, stage piano, string, uh, bass guitar, drum set, tambourine and a string section. Um, and we're going to have a look at how the mixer can control all these different instruments from here. Okay, so you can access the mixer in two ways. You can well, actually you can access it in about four or five different ways, but the most common ways are to go to the view tab over here, click on the panels and open the mixer from there. Or more commonly, you would use a keyboard shortcut, which is M for mixer. There we go. And you can see the mixer there ready to play. Immediately you recognise if you have anything, if you've ever done anything to do with music technology, you recognise the faders. These are going to control the volume. And these wee bars beside it are your meters. So whenever I, whenever I hit the P button so I can start playing the file, you'll see all these meters all springing into life. Here we go. So as it's playing, for example, I can adjust the volume of the piano, let's say. I can turn it up. I can turn it down. I can do that obviously for any of the other instruments as well. Now, that's the mixer in its most basic form. However, over here on the left hand side, you have various controls. The one I'm going to point out first of all is the one at the very top. And what this does is expands the mixer up the way in steps. So there's the first step. There's a second step, and there's a third step. And once you get to that point, when you click it again, it comes back to the basic one. And with these give you various different controls, which we're going to have a look at just shortly. The rest of the buttons are interesting. Um, for example, this one here will turn off and turn on groups. So let's say, for example, you've set the balance of your string section, as we have here, so the first violin slightly quieter than the second, viola's loudest, cello is a bit quieter. If you adjust the strings slider here, the entire string section gets louder or quieter but stays within the same balance until you get to the extremes. Obviously because once the viola reaches its top it can't go any louder so everything tends to come up and catch up with it and the same at the bottom. But you see how you're maintaining the balance. And the same applies for the guitars, for the percussion, drums and tambourine, etc. Okay, so everything is grouped together over here and you can control the volumes of those groups, which is quite a nice wee feature. If you're running, um, well you will be running virtual instruments because your, your Sibelius player is what's producing the sounds. If you have other virtual instruments installed on your system, they would appear there. You can assign different sounds to your different instruments and they would all be controlled from here. And the same applies if you have any virtual effects units installed they can be controlled from here as well. The installation I have here is the box standard straight out of the box installation. I haven't added any um, <clears throat> extra features or instruments, just so you can see exactly what you get when you buy Sibelius. This turns off all the staves, so you can just see the, the groups and the instruments and the effects. So you can turn everything on and off. This one here turns off the master volume over there. So that's what these buttons do. Let's have a look at this one here. Now I'm going to open this up um, just to the first one first of all. So these should be fairly straight, fairly self-explanatory. There's a solo button and a mute button and there's a pan control over here. Now the solo button, if for example again if I play the, the file and I just hit the solo button for the electric piano, here we go. Hit the solo button, the piano becomes, the gag, pardon me, the guitar becomes soloed. Turn off again. If however I hit the mute button, there are two options, there are two settings. The first one is 50% muted, the second one is fully muted. 
just turn that off for a second so you can hear what I'm saying. Yeah, so the, if I hit the mute button once, you see how it's half muted there? Hit it again, it becomes fully muted. So when it's half muted, the instrument goes down to 50% of its volume. If it's fully muted, obviously it goes off altogether. Click it again, it comes back on. The pan control up here is your left to right, what speaker is going to come out of. If it was dead center, it would come out of both speakers equally. And as you start and control over to the left or the right, then it controls over through the stereo image. What part of the stereo image the guitar is going to play through. And that obviously applies for all the other instruments over here as well. Click on this button again to move it up another notch. And what you have here is where you control what MIDI channel you're using and what instruments are actually going to be playing. And this is where it gets interesting for some instruments. Let's have a listen, for example, to start this again. And pay particular attention this time to the trumpets up here. Okay, so here we go. Listen to the trumpets. Now for me, trumpets should be much more strident than that, much more aggressive than that. So, what can we do about that? Well, let's have a look at the settings in here. This area here is where you choose your virtual instrument. Now in this case, we only have Sibelius Player, so that's the only option there. If you had other instruments installed, they would then be listed down there as well. But we're going to stick with Sibelius Player, so that one's fine. Here is where you decide what sounds that stave will play. So for example, this one we're looking particularly at the brass sounds. Now we could look at trumpets and there are all the trumpet options for us. All of these make different sounds and they're actual recordings of trumpet players playing these instruments. That's why sometimes the sounds take a bit of time to load because they're actually loading a lot of individual sounds. However, you also have a brass group section. So you could change it to a brass section, bigger brass section, octal brass section, whatever. I'm going to change it to the bigger brass section. You can test that sound by pressing this wee button here. It'll take a wee second for the sound to load and it'll play it back to you. If I decide to change that, let's say I don't like that, I'm going to go for something else. Let's go for um, a synth brass 2. See what that sounds like. I can test that again. Hmm. It's a bit synthetic for that. No, I'm going to go back. I think I'm going to stick with bigger brass section. Quite like that. And let's have a listen to the, the, the difference that that makes when we're, when we're playing our score back. It may take a wee second to load the sounds. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Loading the sounds. And away we go. So now listen to the, the, the trumpets again when we get to over here. That's much more like it. That sounds much more like a trumpet section to me. Yeah, so you can see you can control what the sounds are actually playing. But over and above that, you have even more control. Let's, for example, for a second, concentrate on the electric guitar part. We triple click it so they would only hear electric guitar. I suppose I could have muted, uh, soloed it six and a half of those. But, down here, there's a wee button that says show or hide smart knobs. And what these are, are individual controls for the specific instrument that's loaded. So for example, this one here, the guitar, has a chorus mix, multiple fret, sorry, more fret noises, so you can decide how many fret noises you're going to hear. Um, this is your flange rate, this is your release control, your cutoff control, and your flange down there. So, what do these things do? Well, let's have a listen to it. I'm just going to play the, the guitar part, and I'm going to mess about with some of these. So here we go. The chorus mix, for example. So you can see the difference that makes. Always find the best way to find out what something does is to take it to the extreme. That's too much, let's take it back a wee bit. The 
the flange rate, you can see the flange down here, there's quite a lot of flange going on, but the rate is how much, how quickly it's going to be going. Have a listen if I turn it up. You know? I can turn that down, I can turn it right off if I want. And all the instruments, when you're using Sibelius 7, when you're using the Sibelius player, have these controls. They're not going to be all the same controls. So, for example, if I go to the trumpet section here, I've got a different set of controls. I can add vibrato. I can decide how long it, it, it takes before the vibrato starts on a note. I can adjust the attack. There are various controls for various instruments, for example, on the electric piano. Different set of controls again. And it's worth just experimenting with these to see how they sound and deciding exactly how you want your your score to sound. You have got complete control over the sounds that these instruments make. So the last one of these, straightforward reverb and chorus controls. Um, let's say for example if I if I want to concentrate this time on the piano. Let's do a con we're going to solo the electric piano. Left and right hand, and I hit P, so it plays it. The reverb is like an echo. Hear it? If I turn it off. It becomes very dry there, and particularly hear it in the silence. The chorus. That makes that sound like an old-fashioned honky-tonk piano, doesn't it? But these, these controls are common to all the instruments in your score. You've actually got it on your, your overall software player over here as well. So you can see that using the mixer accurately and appropriately, you have a lot of control over how your sound, how your score plays back. Um, obviously Sibelius will by default give you what it thinks are the best sounds, but you've, you've got the, the ability then to control them and really tweak them to your heart's content.